All right, welcome back. It's still the Independence Day special right here on Plus TV Africa. And, uh, of course, our next guest, guest is seated and um, uh, aptly poised to do justice to the next discussion on the state of the Nigerian economy. Um, Professor Ndubusi, Ndubisi rather, uh, Wokoma, is a director at the Center for Economic Policy. He is a director at the Center for Economic Policy Analysis and Research um, University of Lagos, Lagos, Nigeria, um, or should I say Akoka, uh, Nigeria. Thank I hope you. I got it right. Prof, welcome Thank to the program. You. Thank you. Um, you're Good looking morning. immaculate. Uh, nice to have you this morning. I, I would love to start on a very um, controversial note. Uh, I'd like you to describe the Nigerian economy as it is today, and please, if you can face your camera. Okay. Okay. Yes, in one word, all right, in one word, and then uh, proceed to tell us, give us your thoughts on the performance of this administration as far as its um, macro and micro policies are concerned um, based on your description of the economy in one word. Now, one of the things President Buhari said today in his speech, uh, Independence Day speech, which is his last before he goes back to his farm in Dara, like I said earlier, he said, quote, uh, efforts in resetting the economy manifested in exiting two economic recessions by the very practical and realistic monetary and fiscal measures to ensure effective public financial management. He also said, in addition, well, I will stop at that. So um, he seems to have given himself some plaudit for exiting two recessions, um, hence giving himself a pass mark. So those two questions you can answer. Well, um if you want me to describe the Nigerian economy in one word, I would say presently it's crumbling. Okay. Yeah, uh, the, the things are falling apart in so many respects. And um, I'm, an ex I, I'm an examiner, uh, I'm a professor of economics, and um, it is not the student who will tell you he did well in an exam. It is the examiner, the consumer, the people who will say, look, our conditions are better in terms of uh, unemployment, in terms of inflation, whatever. So when you are the cook, you wait for the, the consumer of your food to tell you, oh, this is it's tasty, the food is good. And like people say that the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So I, I think uh, to that extent, we can say that the people of Nigeria should be able to say, yes, uh, we had the president, he came into office, and my li our lives are better, or our lives are not better. I cannot look at the indicators and I say, in this area or this area, look at the exchange rate, look at that, uh, that the economy is uh, doing well or not doing well. And let's take a look at, uh, if I may go forward, about how this, uh, the current government made the economy. And we can look at the statistics and look at the data and look at the, the excess crude account. Well, how much was it and how much is it now? We can take a look at inflation with a single digit. Currently, it is uh, over 20%. These are more expensive. And uh, I look at increase in income. The income level has not changed significantly. Take a look at the exchange rates. Take a look at the environment. Take a look at the recession that the country came out of. What led to that the country being able to exit the recessions? It was basically due to developments in the oil and gas sector. Because when you have the change in the price of oil globally, it affects uh, the level of income we, we, we get as a country. So uh, monetary policy and fiscal policy actually have made their contribution, but they are not the major reasons why the country came out of the recession that, we, uh, that, that were reported in 2016 and 2020. 2020 because of the COVID-19. So um, if you look at the whole thing totally, and look at the level of money the country has been able to borrow. Uh, by the time we have, if we have time for all these, we cannot go into them in details. Uh, I think the, the economy is uh, not doing very well, in my opinion. I think a lot still has to be done because, and that will explain why many young persons don't find hope in the country and they're they looking for alternatives outside this, our shore. So there are many issues that can be looked into to know whether the, the economy is doing well or not. Not just, yes, it's good. There are areas you can say that the country could have had some, some progress, maybe in the time to focus on infrastructure and all that. But largely speaking, I think the, the, the economy has not been, it's, it's like packing up in so many areas. Mm. 
Okay, but let's uh, talk about the fact that our economy is over-dependent on a certain sector. And we know the economy is divided into several sectors. The primary sector, which oil is part of, we'll get, get to talk about agriculture. But let's talk about the over-dependence on just, you know, the primary sector and oil and gas sector of our economy. Now, prior to now, we know that agriculture was the mainstay. In 1960, it contributed, you know, uh, about 60% or yeah. over 60% of the GDP. Now we're looking at 25%. How did we get here? <clears throat> yeah. Basically, the policy environment has not actually been positive. Take a look at uh, the government's uh, program, the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, ARGP, which this uh, current government brought into uh, 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 you know, brought up uh, to be able to run the economy. For all the indicators that the ERGP had, it fell below target. All. The only target that the ERGP met was the price of oil because it was underestimated. Because we did a study at, the, at our center on the performance of the ERGP in the first two years. We found that for all the indicators, all the sectors. When you say ERGP, what does that mean? Economic yeah. Recovery and Growth Plan okay. of the Buhari administration, okay. uh -huh, which was a four year medium term plan which was meant to enhance the economy in three core areas, the macroeconomy and the issue of trying to get the economy diversified away from oil. That is the first plan. The, 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 the second one is on investing the people, being able to give their money to those who are vulnerable and all that. The third one to make the economy competitive. These are the three core of, you know, key areas that the ERGP focused on. For all the projections of the ERGP, none of them met target, not one over the, the four-year period. And like I said, the only area in which the government did not think that the price of oil would go as high as it did. So uh, it underperformed. We've been able to get the economy diversified away from oil. Up to today, oil is still the mainstay of the economy. So not much has really changed. And if there's anything that happens to the global economy in the area of oil or oil price, the economy begins to pick up. Either it, the price goes up, or if the price goes down, the economy begins to, to falter and begin to shake. So it is still dependent largely on the oil sector. And I think a lot has to be done. We need to talk about developing the non-oil sector. For now, we are just speaking. I've been an economist for many years. And I know in our various conferences, we're talking about the economy being diversified. It's been like a sing song over the years. It's just like talk, but not much has happened. And this government has been able to talk more about it not much has manifested from the ERGP plan. But Professor BC, my question is, how did we, you know, contribute? I mean, did agriculture then contribute at 60% or over 60% to our GDP? And now we're struggling and grappling. Even though Agriculture 25 is still the largest that you have in our economy now, looking at other, you know, sectors, 2%, 9 and thereabout, uh, you can't still compare with agriculture, but we're not where we should be. Yeah. And so what could be the issue? Yes, like I said, the issue is about policy and focus on oil. For example, when you talk about uh, getting the economy transformed, economic transformation globally, when third world countries move from commodities, agriculture, you move from there to industry, and then you move to services. When the, the GDP of the country was uh, rebased, you know, uh, under Jonathan, you discovered that more than 50% of our economy is on services. ICT, insurance, banking and finance, and so on. And then the middle, which is industry, agriculture, uh, manufacturing, was very thin. And because of the focus on oil, we get cheap money from oil, we've been able to abandon agriculture and manufacturing. And then we now transited, even the agriculture that we had that was as high as up to 50% of uh, the GDP contribution actually began to shrink. And in recent times, it's also been affected because we are now focusing a lot more on livestock. This year about headers and so on, which also affecting crop production. Agriculture has two major components in, in GDP computation. We have the crop and we have the livestock. Uh, the bulk of agricultural contribution is in crops. And for crops, you have cash crops, you have food crops. Now, if you, if you take a look at uh, livestock, the major component there is uh, poultry. But you know, because of the need to give prominence to uh, cows and other kinds of uh, livestock, we've been able to affect the production of, of, of a cash, of a crops because of uh, livestock production. Talk about livestock transformation plan 
which basically is about 2% contribution to GDP. We are destroying the other, the other uh, uh, 30 40% because of 2%. So I think the issue is about policy. The focus of government and the focus on oil has actually been able to bring down this proportion that agriculture contributes to GDP from what it was before to what it is now. So it's about policy and the focus of governance in being able to drive the economy. All right. Uh, uh, because we're looking at Nigeria at 62, we would also uh, go back in time to look at what's been happening over the years uh, since independence. Um, what has been Nigeria's uh, economic development been since uh, uh, we took reins and we, 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 we switched to self-governance or government? Um, I remember that some you know, uh, national leader from a head of state said the problem of the country is not how to make the money, but how to spend it. <laughs> okay. And of course, I do remember some years ago, uh, I wasn't alive, then maybe I may not have been alive, but Nigeria was the Mecca or the Dubai of Africa or West Africa, where people were trooping into this country, including my, my parents, you know, who came over from Ghana. Uh, to, to Nigeria. It was a place where you could come and see skyscrapers. Uh, you could come and see flyovers. The flyovers in Lagos um, and, you know, the butterfly uh, interchanges have been there for years. I mean, there was a time where, you know, the, the, the cement production in the entire world was affected because of the, the, the humongous construction going on in Nigeria. So this is a country that even before Egypt and Dubai began to plan and build cities, Nigeria had already started building a city from scratch in, in the mode of the FCT Abuja. So Nigeria has been there before Ghana got there. Nigeria has been there before Egypt got there, before Dubai got there. What went wrong and when did it go wrong? Yeah, uh, in my opinion, uh, Nigeria has uh, three problems, basically three. Number one is leadership. Number two, two is leadership. And number three is leadership. Leadership, leadership, leadership. Mm -hmm. And if you take a look at economies that have actually been transformed over across the world, even in Asia, take a look at uh, Singapore. Singapore, for example, we have a, a Lee Yu. Lee Kuan Yu came in and transformed that economy. Take a look at uh, even Ghana. From third world to first From world. From third world to first world. Take a look at uh, Hong Kong. Take a look at South Korea. These economies in Asia, you know, even Taiwan, they, they, they move from third world to first world in the literature. And the, if you t find out what are the growth drivers, it's just leadership, principally. Ghana was worse than Nigeria. We had this, that is why we have this uh, language of Ghana must go. They all trooped into Nigeria because they con the country went down until a man emerged, Rollins, and he turned things around for the whole country. And the, Ghan the Ghanaians went back. Many investments actually coming to Africa or West Africa go to Ghana, not Nigeria, because of leadership change. And I think the critical thing is, if we get it right, that is number one. The next thing is about the structure of Nigeria it needs to be taken. We need to, to look at the structure of Nigeria because the structure of production, the structure of governance is very critical. When all of us actually are going at the same pace, that is not how it was. Even in the First Republic, you know, the country was doing much better. I had the Western region going at their own pace with their own policy, you know, structure. We had the Eastern region. We had the North. We need to look at the structure of Nigeria. We, are, we don't all put all of us, we don't talk about everybody being centra, everything being centralized. It, it affects economic growth. We need to, to look at the structure and then make sure that we have the right leadership. It will turn around the economy. This economy is a great, this country is a great country with, with huge potentials. But because people who are being squeezed together and then we don't have the right leadership, everybody comes in, want to, to uh, defend the, the interests of his own people and all kinds of, their, it is compartmentalized and it affects economic growth. So I think the issue is, the leadership is, is so important. Get it right and make sure that we have, have the right structure. I believe in restructuring. It affects economic growth and they will be able to make sure the, the, the country will achieve what it has uh, planned. Well, I, I'm sure that we have to let this go, but just to just uh, leave this at this point, Professor Ndubisi, uh, there's been the Wokoma. Wokoma. Yeah. I, I don't have to call you entire yeah. name entirely, but um, I mean, 
It's been stated that the kind of structural legacy that we inherited from the colonial um, government is responsible for what we're faced at the time with. Because, you know, we inherited a system where as much as we were good with exportation of raw materials, we're very dependent on, you know, the Western market for our commodities. So the discouragement of industrialization has continued. And we see that in the disguise of green environment and green policy and green economy. And Nigeria and other African countries are buying into this. When you ask yourself, how much of the gas are you emitting into you know, the globe at the end of the day, it's not even up to 10%. Why are we even continuing in this line? But I'm sure that it will be another time to you know, have uh, this thought. I, I, I'm sure you want to say something, just in a few <laughs> seconds, Professor. Well, basically, um, we need to gain from our uh, natural resource. Uh, there's always a trade-off in any economic policy or any economic action. There's always a trade-off. You gain here, you lose there. So if actually we need to generate income, make sure we minimize oil theft if, because we are now, it's like double jeopardy. You have this uh, oil, th you have the negative effects of oil production, you have the stealing and the ordinary person is not benefiting. So if we're able to get as much as we can from our fossil fuels and also uh, Take it, you know, bear the consequences. I think we can still do well, at least in the short term. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ndu B.C. Ngokomats, Director of the Africa Center for Policy Analysis and Research, University of Lagos, Akoka. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you and very much. And happy uh, October 1. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Congratulations. Yes, Thank indeed. You. <laughs> we'll be right back. We have more uh, ahead on uh, a special independence program right here on Plus TV Africa. <laughs>